On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1970. We're going to be taking a look at Marmalade and they're going to be performing Reflections of My Life. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get the guys up on screen and see how they get on. jump in here as always the link to this video is going to be in the description below so you guys can check it out there without me interrupting it but I love the way that after the guitar solo we're straight in with vocal harmonies and they are spot on throughout this whole performance it is such a great live version of that original record with the whole dynamic appreciation it's so laid back there's so much headroom in there for you to be able to hear everything so clearly. We also had the really tasteful melodic guitar solo there by Junior Campbell. And it's interesting the way that the camera as soon as the guitar is heard starts zooming in to the acoustic guitar. But then luckily the director makes the decision to take a look at Junior Campbell playing. And the way that he also strings his guitar, you would have noticed that it is just a right-handed guitar but played left-handed he's just literally flipped it around so it means that effectively the strings are upside down from that perspective because it's literally been turned upside down but i do have a few players here on the channel who play that way they just literally learn to play by taking a right-handed guitar and learning all the techniques that way it is such a unique set of motor skills muscle memory all these things combined that means that however you start to play the guitar is the way that you are going to play it. There's gonna be no advantage for somebody who's left-handed learning to play it right-handed and vice versa. And even just being right-handed, learning to play it right-handed, 
I don't think it is a case of giving somebody a guitar and they know whether they're left or right handed at it. Whereas when you're throwing a ball or you're doing something to do with sports, for example, you find that your dominant hand, the one that you've used to do so many things previously in your life, is the one that you prefer to use. Whereas when you start to learn to play the guitar, there's nothing in your life that you've done that is the same as playing the guitar. So you can literally play it either way. The difference that we have here is that all of the shapes, of course, are gonna be the same, but they're gonna be reversed. So it means that when Junior Campbell's playing a solo and he gets up to his high E string, he's now pulling down on the fretboard and vice versa. When he's playing and going down to that low E string, if he is wanting to vibrato, for example, he's gonna be pushing up so that he doesn't go off the fretboard. If you are gonna watch the whole performance, you'll also see the intro given by Dean Ford here on vocals because he mentions about it being a good song for them because it's one of their original songs and it isn't something that they were given or covered and that is something that they had to do with the record label in the past where it was previously on Columbia Records where I think because they weren't having a lot of hits and a lot of success they then wanted to push them down that mainstream avenue of trying to sound a particular way and also take on other people's songs that were written for artists, bands, and that's certainly a period that they went through. But here, they came up with their own song, and this is when they signed with Decca Records. So it's 1969, and this performance is 1970. So this song, Reflections of My Life, was a monster hit for them. So just jumping into the guitar and the chords that we've got going on here, we also will have a little look at Junior's solo, or at least the shapes that he's using and the direction that he goes with it. But the chords, we've pretty much just got a seven chord progression going on here. And we're starting with G into a B minor, into an E minor. And then we've got this great change to a G seventh. And we've got the C run down A minor into a D like that and when playing through that after the C run down to the A minor the D you might want to jump straight into a D sus4 because that's going to mirror what's going on vocally. So it might be a nice thing to throw in there stylistically. And that's just putting your little finger on the third fret of the high E string, just above your second finger when you're playing your D shape. That's the sus4. back to the standard D major. So getting into Junior's lead work here, we're starting on the seventh fret of our G string. With a couple of picks, it sounds like. And the second line. And it sounds like with that, we've got the bend. And then two downstrokes in a row. So effectively economy picking, just doing a little sweep, a mini sweep down from our G to the B string. So. Breaking this down into the lead shape that's being used, we're in G. And once you know the extended pentatonic shape, I think at that point, we've then got a little slide on the eighth fret of the B string. That's where you want to make it to with your slide. That's the end destination. And then, just Four bends was that, a little bit of vibrato in there. Another thing to mention is that this is a super clean tone that Junior's got going on here. And he's also on the neck pickup of his Fender Strat. So it means that we're getting a duller sound, a softer sound. It isn't as bright. It's not going to have the attack of the bridge. And if I'm changing from my neck pickup to the bridge, hopefully you'll be able to hear the difference. And so you can hopefully hear the difference in the treble, the attack, the 
nastiness that's cutting through on that bridge sound or the bridge pickup. And it's something that obviously, depending on the situation you want your lead to sometimes really cut through. And sometimes you want it to be a little bit more mellow as we do have in this case. I think at some point as well, we work our way to the fifth fret of the A string. We have some alternate picking on the D. And then a little slide up, just going through that extended pentatonic shape. And once you're here, That isn't exactly <laughs> what Junior Campbell's playing, but it's something as well that you can add into your playing. If you're familiar with the extended pentatonic shape and you get to this point and you want to throw in an extra couple of notes per string on the B string and the high E string, for example, we get this. We can start to throw in muscle memory wise, first finger, second finger, little finger, keeping one finger per fret. Of course, once you start adding notes on top of your basic shape in the extended pentatonic shape here, for example, and it's the major pentatonic shape, even though major and minor are the same shapes, we've got this. So it means that if we take that down an octave, you can just start doing exactly the same thing in those two octaves and you can now just totally open the door to so many different lines. It's so tastefully done by Junior Campbell. It just sits in there and it's another thing about the ability of the lead guitarist to play a solo that fits the song. Just to throw in there as well, at the end of the solo we do have more fill shapes than lead solo lines. So we have this and this is going to be part of our C shape where the fill comes in and you've got your your shape one there if you're playing this in the major the major pentatonic shape one you probably want to finish on your C because then it makes a little bit more sense when you are playing through that shape but this shape And then we go down to the A minor and we end on the D. So then we go. And I think in this performance, Junior's probably playing the, that top section of the fill. And then moving back down. I think on the record, actually, on the first shape, he's playing his C shape up at the top. So we've got this. And then shifting up to that D. It gets a little bit tight up here, but if you want to get that the little finger over to get that root note, then you can do. I would like to get into the history a little bit in this video as well. So we'll jump back into the performance and get into the history at the end of the video. The world is a bad place, a bad place, a terrible place. it. 
What a great live version of the song, with the harmonies being spot on the whole time. Something else to point out about that is the fact that sometimes we have the main vocal line that's being sung by both Junior and Dean here, but then the harmonies will split off into a different direction than that main line while Dean is continuing to sing that main lead vocal. And it gives it such an impact when that happens. Also, just being able to sing the same note and the same line on pitch with somebody else is so difficult because if one of them is ever so slightly out, it's gonna sound bad because it's gonna be so obvious when one guy's on it and the other guy isn't on it. So a great job vocally all round, as well as the guitar solo. Also with a performance like this where the dynamics are so important, it's all down to that rhythm section, keeping it nice and solid. And I think we have Graham Knight here on bass, even though he doesn't get a lot of airtime, and also Alan Whitehead on drums. So those two locked in together, but also Alan behind that drum kit, the way that he just keeps it so low and just totally drops out on the later verse, but also at the beginning of the song, you can really hear the difference dynamically between our verses and our chorus. And when you consider as well that the progression is gonna be the same for the verse as the chorus, it is all about that lift that you get dynamically that's gonna set those two sections of the song apart. But jumping into the history, going all the way back to 1961, this is when the guys started out as the Gaylords and they were named after the Chicago Gaylords gang. And around this time, Junior Campbell joined the band. It was really early on because he was only 14 years of age. Actually, he joined on his 14th birthday and Bill Irving was on bass at this time. In 1963, they were out gigging and trying to get noticed. And one person that did notice them was Dean Ford, who then got involved with the vocals. And at that point, they were then known as Dean Ford and the Gaylords. So they played in Scotland as much as they could and they did get noticed by Columbia Records. They signed a deal with Columbia Records and released four Four singles. They were also gigging over in Germany, which seemed to be the place to go for a lot of bands to perfect their craft live. And at this point, they were still known as Dean Ford and the Gaylords. They changed their band name further on down the line. But at that time, they were one of the most popular bands in Scotland, if not the most popular band. So they were having success in Scotland, but they were ambitious. And when they returned from Germany to London, they then stayed in London and they changed their management. And the Tremolos, another band at the time, who I do have a video on here somewhere, if you wanna check them out independently, but they suggested to the guys that they should sign with Starlight Artists, which was an agency company. And that was the agency company that the Tremolos were signed to as well. They were starting to get known as a great live band and a tight live band as well as nailing harmonies as we've just seen. This is the point at which they changed their name to The Marmalade and unfortunately their deal with Columbia was coming to an end but the Tremolos were signed to CBS Records and because of that contact The Marmalade then signed to CBS Records as well. So they recorded and released a few singles with CBS Records, but unfortunately they didn't do really well. At this time, Ray Duffy also left the band. He was the previous drummer, but then Alan Whitehead, as we can see in this video, joined the band. They also released I See The Rain, and this was an original by Campbell and Ford, and Jimi Hendrix said it was the best cut of 1967. That same year is when they got a bit of a break because they supported Pink Floyd at the Marquee Club in London, and they were so impressive that the Marquee Club then booked them for the best part of a year. During this time, they toured with The Who, Gene Pitney, Joe Cocker, the Tremolos of course, and they were threatened by their record label because they hadn't had a big hit, even though they were going and playing live a lot. So they were encouraged to do more mainstream material that would chart well. 
They were offered some songs and they rejected Everlasting Love and that turned into a number one for Love Affair and they did record Loving Things in 1968 and fortunately that did get to number six in the UK charts. So it got the record label off their back a little bit and in 1968 they released their debut album which is called There's A Lot Of It About. The next year, 1969, was a huge year for the band because they released their cover of Obla D, Obla Da, and that was a huge number one here in the UK, and it made them the first Scottish band to top the UK charts. They followed that up with Baby Make It Soon, which got to number nine in the charts, so another massive hit. They had TV appearances here in the UK as well, and following that, they signed in 1969 with Decca Records. Records. In their first recording session with Decca Records, they recorded this, Reflections of My Life, and it was a monster hit. It got to number three in the UK, but made it into the top 10 of the US charts, getting to number 10, and it was a massive hit throughout Europe as well, topping the charts in many countries. So it really announced them on the scene. They then released Reflections of the Marmalade as an album. I think the band name going from The Marmalade to just Marmalade, that happened in 1973 with the singles from then on. But previously, they'd always been known as The Marmalade on the vinyls. That's how it was printed. And interestingly now, everything in the 60s is now referred to as just Marmalade without the the before. It. But they did record a couple of albums in the 80s as well, one as recently as 2013 with the alternate lineup. But thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!